are five pentatonic scale shapes on the guitar fretboard, and I'm going to show you all five of them individually, and I'm going to try to show you how they all connect to each other, too. Each of the scales has two different roots in them, a major root and a minor root. The minor root can often be used for a blues sound. So if you play, if you line up the minor root with a, let's say, A, in the case of this first pentatonic, and you play over an A7 chord, you're going to get a bluesy sound. Okay, if you line it up over a C chord, you're going to get more of a happy major sound. Okay, so we have, we're going to learn the major roots and the minor roots. Now, the five scales are all connected. In fact, if you'll notice, as we go through the scales, like for example, the first scale I'm going to show you, I'm going to call number one. And I'm, I call it number one, uh, that's just my, my numbering, uh, but it's the most common one. It's the best scale of the five. Um, and so you'll notice that that scale in particular has six notes all on the same fret. And, and then the, the shape on the top of the scale is here. Well, the bottom of the number one scale is the same as the top of the number five scale. And so it makes it fairly easy to start to memorize the scales up and down the neck. The other great thing about these scales is that they have no open string. So if you have a scale without an open string, they're completely movable. So even though I'm only gonna show you five shapes, you're actually gonna learn 60 different scales because this would be a minor pentatonic. And this would be B flat minor pentatonic, and this would be B minor pentatonic, and so on and so forth. So you technically are going to be maximizing your knowledge just by learning a few fairly simple scale shapes, okay? Let's get started. I'll start out by showing you the very first one. Okay. So we're going to start with pentatonic number one. So we're going to start at the fifth fret, and you'll notice that all six strings have a note at the fifth fret using your first finger. So it makes it fairly easy not only to play, but also fairly easy to remember. And this is going to be pentatonic number one. And pentatonic number one has three A minor roots and three C major roots. It's the only pentatonic that has three of, the, of both roots, okay? So let's get started. First finger on the fifth fret of the bottom string, then reach out with your pinky and get the eighth fret. You could use your third finger, some guitar players do that, but I kind of like, at least for academic purposes, we're gonna be in what's called fifth position. And our first finger is gonna be assigned the fifth fret, second finger is gonna be assigned the sixth fret, the third finger is gonna be assigned the seventh fret, and then the pinky will get the eighth fret. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. First finger, then pinky, then we're gonna go first, third at the seventh fret, and then first, third again at the seventh fret, first, third again, seventh fret, and then first, eighth fret with the pinky, and then first, eight again with the pinky. Let's go backwards. Pinky, first, or eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, uh, and eight, five to finish off. Okay? And like I said, this one just feels really good in hand. There's so many... Actually, Jimmy hits that note to end it, so it's out of that scale. But, but this is a very common scale. It's a very common scale uh, for guitar players, particularly rock and blues guitar players. Just a reminder, here's the A, and here's another A, and here's another A. So if you're playing over like an A7 chord, you want to know where those A's are so you can kind of finish your, finish your riffs on them. Okay? And then here are the C roots. The, down here at the 8th fret on the bottom string, the 3rd uh, string, 5th fret, and the top string at the 8th fret. Pentatonic number two is, I, you know, kind of the second best of the scales. One of the reasons is it's right next to pentatonic number one. So if you're jamming out in pentatonic number one, it's not uncommon to jump up and slide up. George Harrison would do it, you know. Uh, pentatonic number two is also a favorite, was a favorite of Stevie Ray Vaughan's. 
Okay, so let me show you this one. We're going to start with our second finger this time on the uh, bottom string, eighth fret. Remember, we were on that. We had our pinky at the eighth fret last time. Now we're going to start with our second finger there, and we're going to go up from there. So, eighth fret, tenth fret, seventh fret, tenth fret, seven, ten, seven, nine, and then with your second finger, get eight, ten, and eight, ten again. Let's go backwards, and we're gonna we're gonna finger it this way for now. This is what I call the academic way of fingering it. It's it's maybe correct, uh, but when you're actually soloing, when the rubber meets the road, you're probably gonna shift and use your more dominant index and, and ring uh, ring finger to play those top two strings. Okay, but let's let's play it academically at this point first. Okay, so we're gonna have ten with our pinky, eight with our second finger. 10, 8, se uh, sorry, uh, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 8. So it's totally okay. And one thing, one thing you can notice, for one thing, um, this one, this scale only has two A roots. So it only has two of the minors here and here. So the, the, the minor or the blues roots. And then, but it does have three C's. So you'll notice that the C chord is right here. The bar, the E form C chord is right there. So if you play that chord, you technically have 50% of the notes in the pentatonic scale, which is, which is kind of a great way to center yourself for this one. But when you're playing this scale, it's totally fine to go first finger, third finger, and then slide up a fret and play the eighth fret with your first finger and 10th fret with your third finger. Um, instead of your second and fourth. You can bring these more dominant fingers in so you can get some more pow power behind the notes. You get a little more bone tone that way. Okay, so I would say that this is pentatonic number two is probably the second best pentatonic. Again, because it's right next door to pentatonic number one, and it has two ma uh, has three major roots, which is nice, and it's built right around this chord. And it's not too hard to play. It's fairly easy. Okay, my least favorite of these pentatonic shapes is pentatonic number three. Um, it's kind of far from number one which makes it a problem. Now, I still like to use it, and, and part, of the, part of the thing is when I realized it was my least favorite, I really spent a lot of time trying to find some riffs in there and working on it. Um, it's also the only pentatonic of the three, uh, of the five, that actually has a position shift in it, okay? In other words, it's, it's spread out over five frets, so we can't just play positionally. Uh, but I will tend to play the bottom, four or bottom three strings with my first and ring finger, so like that. So 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12. And then we've got to shift down to 9 and go 9, 12, and then back up to 10, 10, 13. We have that one note, and then we have 10, 12. Okay? So 12, 10, 13, 10, 12, 9, 10, or sorry, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10. Okay, and if you want to continue down to get that C root, you could go down two more frets. Okay, let's play that again. I'll try to go a little slower. Sorry about that. So 10, 12. Again, 10, 12. 10, 12. Get re ready with the pinky. Slide down and go 9, 12. And then go back up. 10, 13. And then again, 10, 12. And backwards. 12, 10, 13. 10, pinky on the 12th, 12, 12 uh, 9, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10. Um, you know, there's, a, there's an A root, here's an A root, here's a C root, here's a C root. So another reason why this is not the best pentatonic scale is because it only has two C roots or major roots and two A roots or minor roots. So we've got the C covered, you know, here and here, but I do, you know, like this. There's a lot of... I do like the sound of it. I like the shape. It ultimately feels pretty good once you start messing around with it. But at first, it's a little bit odd, to say the least. And then the, the A roots are here, 
and here. But that's a nice, uh, that A is, is, it's nice to get to it via that third string bend up. It's a little easier than that one in the first position. So a lot of guitar players will go up here to hit that, to hit that riff. Okay, we're gonna continue up the fretboard. We're all the way up to the 12th fret. So if you're having, if you're playing acoustic guitar, this might be difficult. But uh, I feel like um, if you're on electric, you can you can get this down no problem. Okay. Now there's uh, if you think of the the A chord here, the A minor shape there, you can kind of find this scale. It's not very difficult. It's similar to the pentatonic number one. Um, it has also only has two A's in it and two C's in it. So it only has two minor roots and two major roots in it. Um, and again, those roots are great for landing on. They kind of let your audience know that you know what key you're in. <laughs> so, so if the song's in the key of C, you land on a C every now and then. You don't want to land every riff on C, but if you, you land on C, it kind of centers yourself and it lets your audience know that you're, uh, uh, you know what key you're in. <laughs> so here we go, uh, 12th fret. And that's, I'm gonna, this way we're gonna be positionally, we're gonna be uh, first, uh, 12th position. So uh, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, okay? So we're gonna go one, four, one, four, or 12, 15, 12, 15. And then we're gonna have a little bit of symmetry here again. We're gonna go 12, uh, 14, 12, 14, or one, three, one, three, if you wanna think of fingers. And then we're gonna a little shift. Remember our shift from pentatonic number three? That's here in pentatonic number four. So here's the, the second finger is gonna get that note. Finally, the second finger has something to do, then pinky. And then first finger and pinky again. So 12, 15. Let's do that again, I'll give you fret numbers. 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 13, 15, 12, 15. And backwards, 15, 12, 15, 13, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, okay? There's the A roots. So if I'm just, if I'm doing something in a, a kind of an A blues, um, I got that nice root there, and I, I got that nice root that I can kind of hammer onto, which is nice. Okay, I've got my C roots. Well, if you think about this, like this little shape here, it's like a little C chord. Oops, I went out of out of the scale. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. So last but not least, we have pentatonic number five. Okay, you remember pentatonic number one? We had all those notes at the at the fifth fret with the first finger, right? Well, unfortunately, our pinky's going to get all those notes this time. <laughs> So now this isn't one of my favorite shapes. Uh, all the more reason to kind of work on it more than you might, uh, just to kind of get it under your fingers, as they say. Um, and so we're gonna play it at the third fret with our second finger. And then pinky gets the fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret, and then one first finger on the second fret, then pinky on the fifth fret, second fret, fifth fret, third, fifth, third and fifth. You could play it with your first and third finger and then shift and then do that. If I were, a lot of times, you're doing little box shapes within the pentatonics. If I know I'm only gonna be playing the bottom two notes of pentatonic number five, I probably wouldn't play it with my second and pinky. I would use my first and third, okay? Does that make sense? Um, I think about uh, the guitar solo for Let It Be. There's two solos for Let It Be. One is on the album and one was on the single. And George Harrison used a lot of uh, what's called box shapes. And I'm gonna do a video about box shapes. There's five boxes that you can do up and down um, the uh, pentatonics. And uh, it'll make total sense once you know these. But, but that's a bo little box. And this up here is a little box. And this is a little box too. In fact, those that on the middle two strings, the two, five, two, five, 
are the same notes as up here on the a pentatonic number one, only it's an octave lower. Okay, now pentatonic number five has three A's. So it's a pretty good one for the... It's a pretty good one for the, if you're gonna play an A minor or A blues. If you're gonna play in C, you've got two C roots here. You can see those. I think I made the roots red, right? And blue are the are the A's. So the the red notes are the C's, and the blue notes are the A's. Okay, let's play it again. Uh, but let's go ahead and do it academically. Let's play it second finger, fourth finger, second finger, fourth finger, first, fourth, first, fourth, second, fourth finger, second finger, fourth finger. Okay, and that would be three, five, three, five, two, five, two, five, three, five, three, five, and those are fret numbers, backwards fret numbers. Five, three, five, three, five, two, five, two. It's a fairly symmetrical, easy to memorize pentatonic scale, so there's that going for it. Uh, it's also right next to the number one pentatonic. So you're like, likely to use it because it's right next to everybody's favorite, all right? Um, and then the other thing I really try to encourage you to do is play it, you know, on every fret, work, them, work on all the shapes all up and down the frets, um, especially even up high so that you can kind of get used to playing at the higher frets um, on electric anyway. There are no open strings in any of these scales, so they're completely movable. So you learn pentatonic number five um, in A minor or C major, and you've learned basically 12 scales, okay? Because we can move it up a fret and a fret and a fret. Okay, hopefully you're starting to see how all these connect with each other. Um, and hopefully you're able to kind of get some of these under your fingers. I know it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, I do recommend maybe doing some exercises, some like groups of three, four, and five, six, that kind of thing. To, to kind of get them so they feel very natural and that everything becomes fairly simple um, using these scales. Once you have a lot of different patterns under your fingers, you should not have a problem playing the scales, okay? I hope this was fun. Um, I'm gonna probably dig a little deeper into this. I'll probably do blues scales and diatonic scales and uh, different types of pentatonic scales. So there's all sorts of different scales that we can jump into. Uh, and I will do that assuming this video series or this video is popular, okay? Take care, thanks a lot for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell if you wanna get annoying uh, notifications that I'm online live, which I do still, and uh, or if I have a new video coming out, okay? Take care.